Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I want to get back to elementary um, understanding of the Holy Spirit. Is that okay? I think we need to get back to the basics. I think so many times as, as Christians, we can become so consumed or self-absorbed with our issues that we're, we're, we're constantly distracted with, with, with life. And then we forget. And we know this very well. We know the word. Many of us, we know the word. We can quote you scripture. But it's so easy to just begin to shy away or um, to allow the, the, the pressures of this life to get you to entertain other things but God. And, and so tonight I want to just begin to, let's just take, let's take the flood. Remember when the flood hit the earth and, and, and Noah was on this big old boat that he built by the instruction of the Holy Spirit. God gave him dimensions. He gave him description. He gave him everything he needed in order for him to build this ginormous boat. And then he asked him to bring uh, two of every kind. You remember that story, right? So now um, he's ready for, for, for life again. He's ready for a new season. He's ready for this new beginning of the earth, right? And so there's an expectation inside of him. And we know that he, if you know the story, he grabs a dove and he sends the dove out because obviously everything was completely um, buried with water. And, and every time the dove would go out, his expectation was, well, the moment that dove does not come back, then I know that, man, the water is subsiding. Things are looking good. But we know that the bird came back a few times. But then finally, there came a day where the bird uh, went out and it found a place where its little feet can land. And then that was it. Noah said, this is it. We get to start all over again. And how many know that? The dove represents the Holy Spirit. And we have to realize that the Holy Spirit is also trying to come upon sons and daughters who are willing and ready to allow him to land upon his kids. The problem is that sometimes we're too full of ourselves and there's no room for him. We're consumed. We're self-absorbed. And then we're trying to see um, God move in our life in a powerful way, but we fail, to, we fail to, to recognize or we fail to understand that it's the Holy Spirit who empowers us, not only empowers us to walk in, in victory in this life, but he is the one who is our greatest interpreter of what God wants to say to us as well. He is the direction. He's the helper. He's the counselor. He's the comforter. He's, he's everything we need. Jesus said, I'm not leaving you an orphan. I, I'm, I'm trying to leave you another helper, but how many know that many of us are walking around like, like orphans or orphan-hearted when, when, when the Holy Spirit wants to seal you and, and let you know that I have clear direction for you. So um, I want to just keep it simple tonight because I want us to bring, I want to bring us back to this, this fire of the Holy Spirit. Is that okay? So, so let's start with the very simple verse and, and, and let's just see this. I want you to look at Joel 2 verse 28 and I want to write this down. It says, after that, I will pour out my spirit, okay? Your sons and daughters will what? You guys can say this to me. You will what? Okay. What's the next verse? Your old men will what? You will have dreams. And then what else? Notice it's not, I hope. But you will. I think that it's so easy for us when we come to a very dark place, a difficult place, a challenging place, we forget or we ignore the fact that the only one who can give you prophecy, vision, and dreams, vision for your life, vision for your family, vision for your future, dreams, dreams that you want to do on earth, dreams that line up with God's heart, uh, prophecies that God wants to speak into your life. The, the only one who can give you those three things is the Holy Spirit. He says, after that, I will pour out my spirit on all people, not some people, not a few people, not Hispanic people, not black people only, not white people. He says, on 
all people who are willing and ready to allow me to come upon them. And he says, and, and, and they, the, the, the sons and daughters will prophesy. Do you, do you realize that you don't have to be a, a pastor or a prophet to prophesy over your own life? The Holy Spirit will give you a prophetic, futuristic word and see, like right now, if you're just flat out broke, man, do you know that you have the power to begin to prophesy the blessings of God? You know why? Because they're the promises of God. And as long as, listen, God's, his only, let me say this without, without offending people, his only requirement, okay, is to honor his word, not your opinion. So, so that means that if the Holy Spirit is upon me, he says, you will prophesy. When was the last time you actually prophesied over your own personal life without expecting or waiting for someone else to try to bring you some good news? Now, don't get me wrong. I love it when people come and they begin to tell me, you know, Pastor, I can see our new building. I can totally, that's prophecy right there. They're speaking into my future. I love that. But there's, there's nothing more powerful when you yourself begin to speak the future blessing over your life. Life and death is in the power of whose tongue? Your tongue. And so he says you will prophesy and you will have dreams and you will have vision. And so the greatest indication, okay, when you have lost that intimacy with the Holy Spirit is when you lose sight of your prophecies. The greatest indica indication when you have lost that intimacy with the Holy Spirit is when you have lost hope for the dream of God in your life. An indication when you have lost that intimacy with the Holy Spirit, that relationship with the Holy Spirit is when you have lost vision for your life. And how many know that's what the devil comes for? He comes for your prophecies, he comes for your dreams, and he comes for your vision. Think about it. If you no longer dream anymore, guess what happens? You begin to entertain sin. When you no longer have vision anymore, you begin to entertain all kinds of slander, gossip, and you get entertained. Why? Because the enemy knows that when his sons and daughters, his sons and daughters are filled and, and the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon them, they are focused. They know a prophetic word when it comes to them, but they also know how to speak a prophetic word when nothing's happening for them. They know how to dream Big dreams, and they know how to have big vision. You need the Holy Spirit. We need to be in relationship with the Holy Spirit because if we're not, then we will begin to lose sight. You begin to lose sight of vision. You lose sight of God's dreams. You lose sight of God's prophecies. How many have ever had a prophetic word spoken over you? How many? Lift your hand high in the air. Okay. How many have, have, have yet to see something come to pass? Okay, good. Okay, well, good. Because that's, that's all of you guys. That's every single one of us. You know why? Do you know that there's over 5,000 promises in the Bible? And only 2,500 of them have come to pass? So guess what? Even the earth is waiting for another 2,500 more prophecies to come to pass. So don't ever trip if it hasn't happened yet. It's going to happen. But what happens is we delay the promise or we delay the prophecies, not because God is taking his sweet time, but because we keep cursing ourselves and not speaking prophetically the things that God has spoken over us and reminding ourselves of what he's already promised. And so we start talking more about what hasn't happened instead of just looking at that and just begin to prophesy over it. You know what? You're coming, you're coming out of that tomb in the name of Jesus. What's that going to cost you? It's free 99. It doesn't cost you anything. You can speak that. So I believe that, that we have literally as the church, guys, I'm talking about the church of God in general. We've ignored the fact that the Holy Spirit is the dream giver. I don't have a dream. Get the Holy Spirit. I don't have a vision for my life because you're being baptized with the Holy Ghost. No, I've never got a prophecy because you ain't got the Holy Spirit. Because when you got the Holy Spirit, as you read the spoken word, this spoken word right here, this Bible, this Holy Bible is already prophesying to you, promises. But when you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's hard to, it, we say things like this, I don't understand it. Do you see why it's important? We need to reignite this Holy Spirit. Let's keep, let's keep reading. Let's finish this. It says, in those days. Everybody say, in those days. What days do you think those days are? That's now. This is Joel who was prophesying over you and me. 
Joel, the prophet, was already thinking about you sitting at Elevate Church on this night. What's today's date? October 3rd? Okay, that, that means 17 more days. It's, yeah, it's for my birthday. So do, y'all don't forget, October 3rd. <laughs> In those days, I will pour out my spirit on those who If you don't serve, you swerve. Those who are serving him. He says those that are active, those that are willing, those who are obedient, those who want to be that place where the dove one can land upon, those who are willing to accept, those who are willing to be open, those who are willing to receive. He says, uh, men and women alike, I will, and this is my beautiful, this, I love this part. He says, I will show. And notice everything is you will, you will, and then he says, and then I will. You will prophesy, you will dream, you will vision. And then he says, and then I will show you wonders. You know where the wonders come from? When you actually get to see your dream come to pass. See, because you can't make that dream come to pass. But the I will, <laughs> he can bring it to pass. He says, I will show wonders in the heavens. And I love this part. And I will show wonders on the earth. Man, I don't know about you, but I want to see the wonders of God again. Uh, in my life, I want to see the wonders of God in your life. But there's an order to how we begin to see the wonder, the signs, and the miracles of God. And that comes through the Holy Spirit. Are you here tonight? Are you glad you came tonight? Amen. Say to the person next to you, God wants to show you wonders and miracles on this earth. Yes. Here, but, but, but we have to understand, but we have to understand the powerful relationship that we need to have. The most important relationship that you and I need to have is with God who provides his spirit. Because once you understand the importance of this relationship with the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the spirit of God himself. You know what that does to you? It builds confidence. When you have the Holy Spirit and you know he has been poured out on everything. My life, your life, there's this confidence, there's this, this attitude of gratitude. There's this, not only a confidence, but there's this courage. There's a courage where like, man, you don't give a rip to share your testimony. You have the courage from heaven to do whatever it is that God is asking you to do, even if it doesn't make sense to your natural little mind. But because you know the voice, listen, I may not understand all of God, but I know the voice of God. I know his voice. I know what's his voice and I know what's my voice. And, you, and so do you. But we have to understand that when we, when we develop, when we continue to grow this, this intimacy with the Holy Spirit, we deepen our courage. We deepen our confidence. We deepen this, this relationship that becomes so, I mean, the depth is so deep that a person who loves this type of intimacy is never satisfied with human accomplishments. Never. You're never satisfied. And I get it. I love human accomplishments because there's many of us that are very gifted. God bless your giftedness. Like I, love, I like the way the girls sing. Don't they sing wonderful? Yeah, even the guys, they sing awesome. But let me tell you something. That's all gift. That's talent. What I've always taught them, like we got to go from talent and from gift. And don't get me wrong. Once again, they sound awesome. But when do we go from talent and gift, which was given to you for free from God, and we begin to see a move of the Holy Spirit? In other words, something deeper and greater than just my talent. In other words, it's like me. Let's say uh, you were coming to, to know Christ, right? And, and you, got to, you know I'm a Christian. And you come and you're like, hey, what's your name, Mauricio? Hey, what's your name, Stephen? Blah, 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 whatever. We're talking. And that's beautiful that, that, that you get to meet me. But, but what sucks is what if they only get to meet you but they never get to meet him? God's not impressed and neither is that guy. People should come to us and not only meet us, but they should meet him or encounter him through us. And then God becomes impressed. Why? Because the Holy Spirit does something. What do I mean by all this? I'm saying this. I, I, I don't want to get so caught up with only my human accomplishments that I forget that there is someone who wants to do the wonders. What do I mean by that? Do you guys remember a few years ago when, when I told you the story of, of a, a girl, a young girl. She was in her 20s. She, she was dying. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, 
and impressed me to go to the hospital, didn't know the family. You guys remember that story? Many of you? I remember I was there, and I was there when the doctor said, you know, we should unplug her now. I remember clearly. And I looked at the mom. I said, don't unplug her. She's going to live and not die and declare the good works of the Lord. And here's the doctor, and here's the mom. You better know what the heck you're talking about if you're telling mom whom the doctor who practices medicine is telling you what he thinks is the very best thing so his daughter doesn't have to keep suffering. But when the Holy Spirit is upon you, you have the confidence, the courage to look at a doctor and say, you know what? We love you, man, but, but I, I got to be obedient. See, so many of us, we may not understand when God does something, but when you know his voice, his voice will trump what you lack to understand. But when you're always trying to understand everything, guess what? You will never have the confidence to ever step out in anything that has to do with God. So you'll always only accomplish human things that you can do with your gifts and your talents. And we know the story. She was raised from the dead. Y'all remember that? Did we do anything? No, we just showed up in the room, started singing, you know, songs. Just me and a guy on the guitar. I wasn't singing. <laughs> I mean, I did sing, but I, I wasn't like the voice. He was the voice. <laughs> And, and, and what happens, you know what happens, this girl is, is brain dead, uh, no movement. And when we left that hospital, nothing happened. Nothing. You know what's awesome about that? That's when you know that you are out of the way and the Holy Spirit does what he does. He raises the dead. I'll tell you another one. We know the next one, right? Recently, you know what? There was a mom who reached out to the church, said, can you post the picture of my missing son? He's been missing for five weeks. And, and I felt like, no, it's not good enough. We're not just going to post this picture. We asked what happened, what's going on. Well, he's been missing. Uh, do you know where he is? No, we don't know where he is. What's wrong with him? He's bipolar, schizophrenic. He's got all kinds of issues, depression, all these things. Okay, well, how long did they look for him? Three hours. Three total hours. Yeah, that's it. Three hours. Three hours? Oh, no, that's not right. We came back to the church. I told you guys we all prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And then we said, okay, enough praying. Now let's go do. And then Holy Spirit, show us where this young man's body is. We took the same place where the police did all their search for three hours with helicopters, dogs, search teams, uh, uh, x-rays. You name it. Didn't find them. They went in for three hours. We show up with young kids, women, men. Half climbers, all climbers, every, everything, all sizes, everything. And in, three, and in three hours, we find him. How? The Holy Spirit. Do you understand? That's what I mean by there's, there's natural talent, and then there's accomplishments that you can do and I can do, but then there's Holy Spirit stuff that begins to take place, and people ask you, how did you do it? I have, that's it. I, and... and, and because how many know that, that God wants not only you to recapture the wonder of God, but God wants people to catch the wonder of him too. Amen. People want to taste a little bit of heaven on earth through you. But do they just keep meeting you? That's boring. <laughs> right? I mean, no one's impressed when they meet me. Hey, you, you know, you... Yeah, you, you're very inspirational. Great. I don't want to just be an inspirational. Man, you're a great motivator when you speak. I don't want to just be motivating. You know what I want? I want transformation. I want, I want, tra don't you want to transform people's lives? I mean, don't you want to see drug addicts just get super, I get it. There's a process. Go to AA or, or uh, celebrate recovery. Do all those, pro great. But don't you want to just see like the most drug addicted person that just supernaturally, just one day to the next. What happened to you? Man, I had a moment from God. Never touched drugs ever again in my life. How'd that happen? The Holy Spirit. That's what I'm talking about. But we got to recapture this. Okay, can I keep going? Okay, let's break it down now. Do you understand what I'm saying so far? Okay. Because the enemy is coming for your prophecy, the things you can speak. All we did to that girl that was dead and literally was dead. Oh, and by the way, we know that she came. I, I spoke it from here. I prophesied. I said, and guess what? We prayed for her and nothing happened. But she will be here on Christmas and she will testify of God's goodness. Man, you know what? That takes courage to do that. And guess what? On Christmas, where was she? Right here. Testifying of God's goodness. But let's stop waiting for Pastor Mauricio to go do this. 
He said, sons and daughters, you and I. I get a little bit irritated, so try not to do that too much. I don't mind, but like, hey, I'm bringing them to you, Pastor Michelle. No, you got, where's your power? Where are you? This is, this is for both of us. This isn't the pastor has it. No, this is, we have it. I'm a son too. You're a son too. You're a daughter. It's for all of us. But we have to begin to, to come to the place where we understand what God is trying to do. And so he says, in those days, I'll pour out my spirit on those uh, who serve me, men and women. I will show one. Notice he says, I'll pour it on those who serve me. Because obviously the Holy Spirit needs someone active. Can't be inactive and then think the Holy Spirit's going to be upon you. If you're not serving God on this earth, how's the Holy Spirit ever going to be upon you? There's, there's, he, needs, he, needs, he needs active people. He needs moving people. He wants people that are going to have confidence. He wants people that are going to believe for the impossible. Come on. When the Holy Spirit is in your life, you know what happens? You begin to step into this realm where you invade the impossible. When we, re when we read verses like, with God, nothing is impossible, but all things are possible through him who believes. You know how that happens? When you have a fresh revelation of the Holy Spirit in your life, because only the Holy Spirit can invade the impossible. You can't but he can. We got to get this guy. It's in the Bible. If you believe in this Bible, then we have to believe the whole truth in this Bible. Let me keep uh, laying down my, my point here. Everybody say, uh, stop the status quo. Come on, we need to stop this whole traditional boundary stuff. We got to be, we got to stop this whole tradition. What, what kind of Christian are you? Well, I go to church every Sunday, praise God. That, that's tradition. No, it's got to, it's got to be deeper than that. Well, do you share your faith? Well, no, I don't want to offend people because I respect people's faith. What the heck? So you don't respect yours? What? Yeah, so, you, so in other words, you don't believe yours. Because if you believed yours, you'd be confident about sharing yours. Oh, no, but I don't, want, I, 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 don't want to, I don't want to push them away from Jesus. You in their life has already pushed them away. We need confidence. We need people to say things like, oh, dang, man, I almost got saved because of you. I've had Muslims tell me, like, you almost got me. <laughs> I, on planes, everywhere, in Mexico, in Costa Rica, different places where I've had people say, man, whew, man, you're good. But they don't really, it's not, it's not that I'm good. It's that the Holy Spirit is convicting them. There's, it's not me. They're not, they weren't impressed with me. They were impressed with my God. And that's what, that's what people want. They, they don't. They're not going to be impressed with you. They're going to be impressed with God in you. That's what they want. Amen? Okay. Look at this. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 quickly through verse 22. It says, don't put out. Everybody say, don't put out. He says, don't put out. Don't quench. Don't stop the Holy Spirit's fire. This service is called what? Ignite. That's the whole purpose. God wants to keep you ignited. The scripture says, don't put out. Now, the original translation is, is don't quench. Don't quench. Don't put out. Don't stop. It's kind of like your, your, your garden hose if you have one, okay? Um, right now, I have a gopher that I'm trying to get rid of at my house. We've already killed like five, but there's like still like a whole family there. And, and so what I did one night is I, I drowned the hole. And I grab, I don't know, is that the right way to do that? Can you do that? Will they do? That's one way? Okay, good. Huh? Oh, peanut butter. Okay, I'm going to try that. Peanut butter. They're going, they're down. They're going down. Now, if you're an animal lover, oh, smell. So, so I, grab, I grab my water hose, right? I'm like, oh, that's it. Because they have jacked up my yard everywhere, you know? And we have a nice yard. I'm like, oh, heck to the no. And so I went, I went and grabbed my hose. Now, of course, if I just do this, I'm going to be having to carry the hose with water, coming out, pouring. So you know what I did is I, 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 I pinched the hose, halfway turn it on, and then I get to my destination the whole night, and then I let it flood. So many of us do this with the Holy Spirit. He's trying to work in you, but you keep quenching him. You keep stopping his flow. Like you're here tonight, and you're like, okay, this makes sense. I like what he's saying. And then, and, then, and, then, and then guess what? Then you go back home and you go back to tradition. And so you have to expose yourself and say, I better watch it. Man, tomorrow I better go do something crazy. Like just tell the Holy, Holy Spirit, lead me to someone. I'll tell them. If you tell me to, 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 to tell them this deep, prophetic, futuristic, 
you could call it encouragement. I have an, instead of saying I have a prophetic word, praise God. You can just say I have an encouraging word from you from God. Because if you say prophecy, then you're like, what? What do you, what do you mean pro- prophecy? What? Okay, encouraging word. I got a deep, encouraging spiritual word from heaven. It's not a practical word. It's a heaven word. When was the last time you spoke like that to someone? You know why we don't do that? Because there's no Holy Spirit. We, we stopped it. We quenched it. Go back to the verse, please. Do not quench. Do not stop. The Holy Spirit's what? Fire. Don't treat prophecies as if they amount to what? Nothing. In other words, don't treat your word as if the Bible, as if it's nothing. The Bible says, and by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. How many of us treat it like it's really not true? Don't treat the prophecies. Don't treat the prophetic. Do you know that everything you're reading in the Bible is all prophecy? Every single word that you're reading, it's all prophecy. And so many of it hasn't come to pass. But it says, stop treating it as if it amounts to nothing. Put everything to the test. What? You know what? If you want the fire, go to a hospital tomorrow. I was a chaplain for for the West Hills Hospital for five years. I double dog dare, you know, just go and sign up. Say, I want to be the chaplain of this hospital in Harry Mayo. And you know what you do? Put God's word to the test. Go lay hands on. I have walked into so many hospitals, okay. When I was in uh, the chaplain, they gave me, because they saw my miracle of cancer, and, and that's pretty awesome. That's, that was God. That wasn't me. That was God. It was there. Not there anymore. Where's it at? I don't know. It's not there. How that happen? I was dead on my life. How did it happen? Holy Spirit. And, and they gave me the, the key to every single floor, including the, NI, they call it the NICU, which is for a nursery, intensive care unit. And I would pray for babies, and I would pray for uh, the, 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 the critical care, intensive care. And these were stories where like, man, uh, he's dying, he'll be dying tonight. I'm like, heck no, no family, nothing. I just go there and just let. Now, I don't know if they lived or died. I don't care. My job is just to go there and Holy Spirit, you do what you do best and you just work something in him, Father. Raise him from the dead. Father, give him something. Let him awaken. And you know what? That's what you do. You just step out. It is not your burden to carry the outcome of what happens to that person it is your burden to have compassion and and passion and fire to go and do it it's on him not you stop acting like you're doing it you ain't doing nothing (laughs) so when people say like you prayed and nothing happened you know what you're right (laughs) i did pray and nothing happened i'm just waiting on him to do it are you getting this and so we 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 stop we stop stepping out. We stop the Holy Spirit because we keep thinking it's us. And when things don't happen the way you hear it up here on stage, like, wow, if pastor can raise, you know, people from the dead, I can do it. No, I don't raise people from the dead. God does. I'm just the servant that he's upon, and I just show up, and then God does the rest. Does it always happen? No. No. My niece when she was in her last minute of breathing, it didn't happen for me. It didn't happen for me. She went home to be with Jesus. So I know what it's like to see the miracles of God and to see the things I just can't understand. I get, let, me, let me take you to a verse so you can get this. He says, put everything to the, to the test. Hold on to what is good. Hold on to what? To what is good. Hold on to what is what? Hold on to what is good. Hold on to what is what? Hold on to what is what? Okay, so what's good? The situation's bad, but you know who's good? He's good. Hold on to what is good. It's good. Well, he's not going to make it. Well, the good word, the good book says, hold fast to the confession of your faith. Hold fast. Hold on. Amen? To what is good and stay away from every evil kind. Stay away. What's that? What's that? Now, God's not talking about little demons with, you know, little horns that are hanging out at the, at the hospital. No, he's saying stay away from the evil kind. You know what the evil kind is? Is those who speak against the prophecies that God has already spoken. Your job is to bring the truth. God's, God's job is to bring it to pass. So what do you do when you get in a room, which we've been many times as a church, 
I've, I've shown up at, at hospitals, and you got half the family like, pull the plug, pull the plug. Pull. It's, 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 it's sad. I've seen it over and over again. And the other family's like, no, we're believing God. We're believing God. Pull the plug, believing God. Pull the plug, believing God. Pull. And it's just like, it's like war. And I'm like, God, give me wisdom. Because how do you bring two families that are divided like America? How do you bring two families together and bring them to a place of, of, of agreement? You know how? The Holy Spirit. I have left hospital rooms where there was that kind of battle, and by the time we're done, they didn't pull any plug. And I walk out and they're saying, like, God, thank you. I don't know what you did, but it was awesome. That, that's awesome. We don't, we don't walk in power to get credit. We walk in power so he's glorified. We don't walk in power so they can say, oh, my God, look at that church. They, they, they heal the sick. No, look at that church. The spirit of God is upon them. Them, you. You, 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 upon them, right upon us. Test, test it. I dare you, go test it tonight. Find someone who's not feeling well. Pray for them. Pray for them. What if they don't want, what if they don't want me to pray for them? Then don't pray for them. Why, why trip? What if I sound stupid? You just did. <laughs> and you made it. It's okay. But what if, what if it comes out weird? You are weird. <laughs> you just, you have to just, yeah, I am all those things. What if, what if I say something dumb? Well, you've said a lot of dumb things in the past. Haven't you? How many has ever said something dumb? I've said dumb stuff here from this pulpit. You know what I'm saying? We need to just go ahead and be infused and ignited by the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I'll obey you even when I don't understand you. I'll obey you even when I'm not feeling it. I'll obey you even when my flesh doesn't want to do it. I will obey you. Amen? Okay, let's read another verse. We're almost done. Maybe. Everybody say, don't stop the power. So you got to stay away from every evil kind. So when people start talking negative, like, nah, they're not going to make it. Nah, I think it's, you know, get away. Walk away. That's not your place. Stay away. You'll get contaminated. Here, here's, now let me tell you why. Here is why we need, a, we need the power or the endowment of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you why. In John 6, 63 through 64 says this. It says, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for what? And, what is, and isn't it the flesh that's always trying to get in the way of God? Like your flesh is always telling you, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You're going to sound stupid. You're going to be dumb. Don't do it. Don't. That's your flesh. But it counts for nothing. That's why when you got the spirit, you no longer count on your flesh. You count on him. And so it says, and so the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, the words, the words in the Bible, the scriptures, the, the Bible that you read, he says, I have spoken those words to you. They are full of what? Spirit. And they're what? Life. They're full of what? Spirit and life. Okay, so watch this. Yet there are some of you who still do not believe. You know why most people struggle with the Holy Spirit? Because they're too caught up in their flesh. You keep letting the flesh have more authority. You have more confidence in the flesh than you do of allowing the Holy Spirit, allowing him to land upon you and say, okay, just show me. Because obviously, can you imagine living the rest of your life with just a whole bunch of Bible information, but there was never any transformation of your life? That there was, a, there was never any fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life? How's that going to work for you? How's that going to work for me? What are you going to tell God? God, it didn't work, man. I know what you said. See, we have a lot of head knowledge. Yeah, I know what the Bible says. But God wants it to go from knowledge to power. He wants us to not only walk in power, but he wants us to live in power. He wants us to speak in power. Let me explain this to you. Um, so the spirit gives life and the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they're full of the spirit and they're full of life. Yet there are some of you who still don't believe. For example, I have ministered in, in different parts of the world. 
And, um, and I've ministered to people that don't speak English or Spanish. For example, I remember speaking to this one Armenian man. And, um, and I was sharing Jesus with him. And so I grabbed a quick interpreter and I said, hey, can you interpret for me what I want to say to him? And so I grew up with Armenians. Any Armenians in here tonight? Any Armenians? No? Okay. So I grew up with Armenians. I grew up in Hollywood, California. I went to Hollywood High School, Armenian land. And uh, it really was. But there are a lot, a lot more of my friends, really good friends. Arme- my neighborhood, it was all Armenians. So after school, I'd go to their houses and be eating like Armenian pizza and all that. And their coffee, oh my God, was... It's like oil. But, man, you were just lit, you know, just. And so, but anyways, I remember, I remember speaking to this one Armenian guy, and, um, and I'm sharing the gospel with him, right? And as I'm talking to him, I, I understand Ar- Ar- Armenian is pretty, it's pretty strong language. And so I'm like, hey, uh, God loves you. God, wants, God has a plan for you. God wants to, he wants to heal you. And, you know, you know the, the whole ministry, right? So I'm, like, ministering, encouraging him, prophesying over And then uh, he starts going, uh, and and he starts going really deep with his tongue, thinking, oh, my God, did he just cuss my mama out? You know, like, like what did he just say? What did he just say to me? Like, tell me what he just said. Don't lie what he just said. And so, but he's going with this deep tone, like, you know, just deep Armenian, right? And I couldn't understand for lick. Obviously, I don't speak the language, but I can, I can understand tone. <laughs> and, and so he's, like, going deep in this tone. So I'm thinking, dang, I just offended this dude. He's probably ticked off because who the heck are you to share Jesus? So I don't know which way it's going to go. So I, the interpreter says, no, you know, what he's saying is that what, what you just shared with him um, it bears witness with what's happened in his life. And he just began to share of the hurt and the pain of what happened to him years ago with a father passing away and, and resentment and unforgiveness and all this stuff. And, and so when, when you read verses like this, that the, that the spirit gives life and the flesh counts for nothing, the words I have spoken to, they are full of the spirit. Here's, here's what that means. What God is saying is that many of us, we read these verses and we still don't understand because we keep trying to understand with our natural flesh, man. And you can't interpret what God is trying to say to you. Why? Because what God says, he does not say it in your native language. He says it by the Spirit. And the only one who can interpret what you don't understand is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your interpreter that begins to explain to you, here is what this means. That's why in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 it says, And do not lean on your own understanding, but acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You know what that means? That means that until you come to the place in your life where you give up the right to understand, you'll never know what the Spirit is trying to say to you. Never. you got to give up the right to understand. That's when the peace of God comes upon you. But when you're always trying to understand everything in your natural mind, you will never have the spirit or even the peace of God. That surpasses what you're trying to figure out with your natural head. Amen? Amen? Amen. Is that too deep for you? I mean, that was as simple as ABC. I could have taught that in kids' ministry today. (laughs) Are you hearing? So you need that interpreter. Because sometimes we can't understand God's word. And you're trying to pull out of a dark place, but you can't understand. You know why? Because what, the word that God's going to bring you is going to be spirit. Like tonight, the word I'm bringing you is spirit. And, and if you're not open to the word of God, and if you're not open to the interpretation that the Holy Spirit is giving us tonight through this teaching, you're going to walk out of here still stuck with your head knowledge. You're still going to be fleshly. You're like, oh, see, man, there's, that, there's, that, there's those charismatic preachers again. No, I'm not charismatic. No, I'm teaching you the word of God. It's the truth. It's the truth. At some point, you got to come to that truth. You have to make a personal decision. So many of us, we know the word of God, but let's be honest. Some of us, we have stopped being Holy Spirit led. Can we be honest? We've all been there. I've had those moments. Even when I've left on a sound like, dang, I don't know if I felt the spirit there or what. But that's okay because we have a God who is so compassionate and so loving. He ain't hating on us tonight, but he is exposing us tonight saying, come on, guys. I want to I fill you with my Holy Spirit with fire. So stop stopping him. Amen. Okay.
For example, uh, sometimes God may ask you by the Holy Spirit, he may tell you to forgive someone. And you already know you don't want to forgive. Why? Because in your head you're like, they don't deserve forgiveness. They jacked me up. They, they, they screwed me up. They, they really hurt me. Well, guess what? It's not about what I understand. It's about will I obey what he just said. That's it. There's been times where God has told me to give specific dollar amounts to ministries. I'm like, God, why would you do that? You know I'm in need. Why would you tell me to do that? He's like, because you're still trying to understand. <laughs> but I know his voice because the devil's never going to tell me to give anything to God. <laughs> oh, that's just, they just want, no. That, that, that's this, you got you to gotta develop an ear to know God's voice and to know your voice, and to know the devil's voice. Because they all speak. Every single one of them speak. Know his voice. Everybody say recapture. recapture. Can we get our worship team up? Let me just close with this. Are you guys okay? Normally, are you guys exhausted yet? No, is this good? Okay, you know Ignite ends at 9 o'clock, right? You know that, right? Are you guys exhausted, tired? Because I want you to get this tonight. But I'm going to bring them up so that you can think and feel like they're gonna, we're going to end, but we're not. <laughs> You're like, wow, we're coming to a close. Praise God. No, we're not. No, we are. We are. Okay. I'm going to end with this. Because I want to pray for us tonight. I want, I want us all to, to come to a place where we're, we're reignited. And, um, and we... We're not only reignited, but we're asking God to allow us to, to get the interpretation of what God is saying to us tonight. Because this, this, this word is not just for uh, people that don't know who the Holy Spirit is. I believe that this word is mainly or mostly for people that we have known the Holy Spirit for a long time. And, and we've gotten a little bit cold. And those that are here that maybe are new to the Holy Spirit, maybe this will catch fire in your heart and, and something beautiful will happen the worst thing you could, that, that could ever happen in your life is to lose the Holy Spirit you know why because when you lose the Holy Spirit you lose his presence to lose the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that God is that God is is taking him from you but it does mean that you're withdrawing yourself from him and that's scary because when you withdraw yourself from him, you get sloppy. You get lazy. You kind of go, you, God created you by design, but you to fall back to your old person again. You're, you're back to old you again. Angry, upset, irritated. You're doubtful again. There was a time when you were on fire, but life happened and and it was like water putting your fire out. And then you just let one wave after the next wave hit you. And, and you, just, you just get sloppy with this relationship. And in the scriptures, it's so clear how, how there were wonderful people in the Bible who, who had a prophecy, who had a dream, who had a vision, like Samson. You know, God chose this man who was a nobody. He comes from probably the worst type of pedigree, family background that anyone can ever come up with. But, but God had a plan for him. And he begins to prophesy a word in him and he gives him a dream and vision, but not just not just man's dream. You know, don't don't be very careful that you're not just dreaming a whole bunch of you and none of him. Your dream should involve God in it. Like when you buy a brand new house, it shouldn't be, I'm consumed with getting my brand new house, my brand new car. But how about be consumed with saying, God, I thank you that your dream is for me to have a good working vehicle because Father, I will drive people to church with this thing. See the difference? God, I thank you for this house that you're about to bless me or this condo or this townhome because this townhome will not only be my sanctuary, but it will be a place of healing for those who walk through these doors. See the difference? A prophecy. I look at a friend and I say, you know what? Man, maybe it hasn't been as, as quick as you thought it would be, but that's okay because remember that God never leaves you, never forsakes you. And remember that when God speaks a prophetic word, he who has begun a good work, he will complete it. He will finish it. So don't give in. Don't give up. He's faithful. You're going to see it. Recapture that dream. 
recapture that vision. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe someone betrayed you. Someone came in and did something harmful that hurt you, and you've been carrying that forever. God is saying, daughter, if you just give that to me, if you just lay that right here at my altar, I'll take it from you, but you have to release it. And when you release it, you'll walk away feeling free, and you'll feel happy again, and you'll feel satisfied in me and not in any person because no person can make up for the hurt or the pain that you've experienced. Only the Father God. Only the Holy Spirit can comfort you in that dry place. Only the Holy Spirit can open up a river in the desert. And tonight is that night. How about that? That's a word for you, amen? And so, Judges 16, 20. Come on, the Holy Spirit is moving up in this place already, huh? So let's just get, get ready. If your kids have to go to school, leave them in children's ministry. They'll be fine. So Samson is anointed with the Holy Spirit. He's got dream. He's got prophecy. He's got vision. He's carrying it. He's living it. But here's the problem. He was playing and entertaining the world. As Christians, we can begin entertaining things, distractions, stuff that just draws our attention away from God's purposes, draws our attention away from God's prophecies, from God's dreams, from God's vision. And, and, and Samson, he was entertaining this, this woman named Delilah, and, and, and it was beyond Delilah. The, the enemy was coming for the prophecy. The enemy was coming for the dream. The enemy was coming for the vision. The enemy can care less about Samson. The enemy can care less about you. He wants the dream that's inside of you. Because God forbid you ever wake up, you dreamer. And she said to him, the Philistines, the enemy, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and he said, I will go out as before. I'll just do what I used to do. I'll just go back to how I used to just say, in the name of Jesus, I'll just do the same thing. I'll just go to church again. That's good. I'll just, I'll just read my Bible. And those are all great things. Awesome, right? That's what he was doing. If you really begin to think about it, okay, he had entertained this sin so long that, that he just thought that things would just keep working. Like they always worked, right? He says, I'll shake myself free. Notice that I, when that I comes in your life, be careful. I, I got this. I will handle this. I, look at this. I will shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Then the Philistines took him and put, uh, put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. And they bound him with bronze fetters. And he became a grinder in the prison. Listen. Man, he literally not only uh, uh, Jack Samson's strength left him. That's what he was known for, right? He was strong. Watch the movie. There's a movie out there. I don't know if it's good or not, but, but the Bible story is good. But Samson was anointed. He was strong. It was supernatural. It wasn't human strength. It was Holy Spirit strength. He had, he had strength to, to lead the people of Israel. But then he entertained too many things. And, and then when he thought that he was good, but didn't realize that the that the presence of the Lord had departed his life. And now he's like, I'll just go and do what I always do. And he goes out there and the Lord wasn't with him and he gets caught now. And he goes from being a strong man to being a grinding man. He was grinding grain in the prison. Ephesians 4.30 says this. And do not grieve, everybody say grieve. The first one was quench, right? See, when when... When you, when you quench the Holy Spirit, you stop. But when you grieve the Holy Spirit, that deals with your character. He says, do not grieve God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on that day of redemption. Get rid of all what? Are you, did I give you guys that verse? Ephesians? Am I speaking Espanol? <laughs> Maybe I didn't give it to you guys. But it's Ephesians 4, verse 30 through 31, if you guys can find that. He says, I do not grieve God's Holy Spirit. Okay, he says, remember, you identify with his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid. Everybody say, get rid. Get rid. Say it again. Get rid. get rid. It says, get rid of all bitterness. Get rid of all rage. Get rid of all anger. Get rid of all harsh words and slander as well as all types of evil behavior. Get rid of it. He's saying get rid of it. Get rid of it. Because if you don't, you are 
not only stopping, but you are grieving. You are grieving the Holy Spirit. And, and, and let me tell you something. When we grieve the Holy Spirit, we're making God sad by the fact of how we choose to live. And we don't have to be far off in sin to grieve the Holy Spirit. But how many know that the Holy Spirit will, will start seizing his power because you stop the flow of the Holy Spirit? If we keep grieving him, then we start losing conviction, don't we? In other words, the Holy Spirit is the one who tells you when you're off. When you keep doing, when you keep grieving and grieving and grieving, you'll come to a place where the Holy Spirit will give you up to your way. And you will no longer have conviction. You'll keep living the same lifestyle over and over again. You know why? Because there's nothing connecting anymore. You're like Samson. You went out, thought you were going to do it again, and the Lord had departed from you. But we know that the Lord doesn't depart from us. We depart from him. God is still in the same place. So guess what? We know the story of Samson, right? He, he's now in prison. Can you imagine the shame, the condemnation? But, but can you also imagine this? Uh, you can read the story for yourself. He starts coming to a place of repentance. See, when you begin to repent for your lack of conviction, your lack of fire, when you start repenting to the Holy Spirit and saying, forgive me for ignoring you, Forgive me for, for assuming that you're not in my life. Forgive me for not believing that. You know what happens? God's grace comes upon us quickly. You know how I know that? I know that because in Judges 16, 22, look at this. It says, and but before long. I'm going to say but. Man, I love it when God uses a but. Because <laughs> he'll tell you he's going to jack you up. But I love you, man. But before long, his hair began to grow back. And if you know, the, the thing that cut off his strength was God told him, don't you let anyone cut your hair. In other words, don't you let anyone cut his, God's anointing in your life. Well, he let the girl cut his hair. He had no more strength. But how many know that when you begin to repent, your hair's growing back? You're growing back. Everybody said, I'm coming back. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he had a comeback. Yeah, he had a big setback, but then he had a comeback. And after he started seeing this, he was like, oh. He said, all right. And he said, all right, Lord, <laughs> one more time. Everybody say, one more time. See, it's not how you start. It's how you're going to finish this life. And he said, one more time, all right. He's like, Lord, just give me a I'm going to knock these pillars down. I'm going to kill everybody up in this place. <laughs> and you know what God did? He gave it to him. He gave him his strength back because he repented. And we know he broke everything down. Watch the movie. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> Everybody say, how do I grow back? You got to end your hunger strike. You got to end your hunger strike. I ain't hungry. I know you're not. But I ain't. But I ain't. There's, there's, these are the four reasons why people are not hungry. Number one, when you're not hungry, it's because you're sick. Is that true? Number two, you're distracted. When you're distracted with goofiness, do you even think about, I, I have an issue with that. I, I work so much. I like, I love, I get into my work, I forget to eat lunch. Sometimes I don't eat till six o'clock, seven o'clock at night. And, and I just, cause I'm, I get distracted. So I'm not hungry cause I'm passionate about what I'm doing. Right? Number three, you change diets. Uh, you change diets. Like, man, I, I, I don't eat like that. So many of us have changed the gospel for the world. We've put the gospel down and we're like, okay, well, let's just do some self-help stuff. And praise God for self-help stuff. But how many know that the Bible is not about self-help? The Bible is about self-transformation. He wants to transform you. And the fourth one is you're dead. If you're dead, you ain't hungry. You're dead. You shouldn't be hungry. If you're dead, you're not. That's not a hard one, right? If you're dead, how do I know this is true? Last verse and let me pray for you and let's go home. Matthew 5, 6 says this, blessed. Everybody say blessed. blessed. Stand to your feet. Come on, let's get out of here because I know some of you look too tired, especially you spiritual people that I've known for many years. <laughs> you, I'm gonna, if I spend a little bit extra time with you praying, you know why. Uh, Matthew 5, 6. Everybody say blessed. blessed. Joyful. Joyful. Look at that. Look at the verse. Blessed, joyful, nourished. Everybody say nourished. 
by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who actively, ever say actively, seek right standing with God for they will be completely satisfied. Completely satisfied. In other words, I, I ain't satisfied with this life. That's because you're not complete in him. Ooh, what? How, well, okay, great, Pastor. You just told me how, how this verse says I'm, I can be completely satisfied in him. But how, how do I start getting completely satisfied with him? Because I think some of us would stay stuck there and still not know. I'll tell you how. Have you ever been with a whole bunch of friends and, and they're like, hey, we're going to go hang out. And, and, and hey, where are we meeting at? Hey, we're going to go meet at Lazy Dogs. All right. Ah, oh, dang, I ain't even hungry. I already had lunch, but I'll go. Okay. And I'm down. All right, I'm game. So you get there and you're like with all your friends, right? And you know you're not going to eat. You know you're not going to eat. But once they start ordering, they're like, are you going to order? No, I'm good. I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm going to die. <laughs> right? I'm losing weight. Praise God. Right? I'm starting my cleanse. Praise Jesus. You know? And, and, but what happens? You, you order the, they, they start ordering the food, right? right? So they order and you're just, yeah, I ain't moved. I ain't hungry. I ain't come ready to eat. But then the plate starts coming like, the smell comes. And you're like, dang. And hey, you sure? You, sh you know what? No, I'm good. I'm good. But then they start, they take that. You know how that goes, right? They put that first spoon in their mouth and your taste buds start going like your saliva goes crazy wild. And you're, you know, you know I'm talking to you. And you're just like, and you're just like swallowing your own saliva. You're like, right? And you know your friends know that you're hungry now. They ain't dumb. They're like, hey, would you like, would you like, would you like just a little piece? And you're like, okay, just one. And then before you know it, everybody shared, you, you know you gypped them because you got a whole free meal out of everybody, right? So, so what am I saying? I'm saying this. I'm saying this. If you want to get the fire back, you're going to have to change up some relationships and go hang out with some people that smell like Jesus, that talk Jesus, and their smell on them is going to strike some hunger. Why? Because when you get around people, if you're not around people that are saying, hey, so tell me what is, like today I had, I had, I had breakfast with someone today. And I'm like, hey, so what's going on in your life? You know, like what's God doing in your life? If, when was the last time someone said, hey, what's God doing in your life? Hey, hey, who are you sharing Jesus with right now? Like who are you speaking to? Who are you, who are you witnessing to, man? Uh, another question is simply like, hey, uh, so, so uh, right now at work, uh, What's it like, you know, when you're sharing God or do you share God? Like, these are the type of questions we should be asking each other as we're hanging out. Because that will strike a hunger. There's no other way. But don't also be that, that person junkie. Where it's like, oh, I got to be around Carlos because he's so anointed. You know, just like, oh, I just want to be around him because he keeps me always passionate and excited. Listen, at some point. You have to be dependent on the Holy Spirit, and you got to grow up. You got the Holy Spirit living in you. Grow up. Grow up. Oh, oh, I'm not on fire because there's not enough fire people. Hey, listen, you were, you were the one to be igniting people, not people igniting you for the rest of your life. Oh, I still don't know if I believe that. Praise God. Okay, you tell that to God when you, when you stand before him. You tell him. I, I didn't believe you in that. I read everything, and there's some certain parts we need to talk about, God. You think he's going to sit there and just be like, you know what, you're so right. I'm so sorry. I just, I wasn't clear about it. Gosh darn it. I, I wasn't clear. I am so sorry. He's not going to do that. He's going to tell you, I am truth, and in me was life. And I didn't leave you an orphan. I left you my spirit. And you had a choice to make. To be endowed with my spirit, with my presence, with my wisdom, with my understanding. But you chose not to. That was your choice. And then you guys have to talk about it. That's none of our business. It's between you and God. Amen. That's not on me. I'll never judge anyone. That's on you and God. On that day, you have to answer for that. We all have to answer for that. But while we're here, we're reminding ourselves of what we're going to answer for. Bow your head, close your eyes. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.